No. Okay, I can't change that. So I guess people can see me. Flynn, wait, 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 don't. don't do, you gotta get in the camera. Otherwise, we're. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello. Whoa. Testing, testing. I hope everyone can see me out there in, in the world. Um. So Whoa. I'm checking to see. First, I have to check to see whether or not you guys can all see me out there in the world. I hope you can. Hi. Uh, this is our first ever recording, so we're going to try this out for the first time. I'm going to be checking on this, the Facebook app, to see whether or not uh, you guys can see me and also whether or not... No, not remind me in 15 minutes. Ah, shoot. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Let's see, how can I tell if people can see me live? Beautiful wife, can you help me with that? Um, yes. Okay. What I'm going to do Thank is you. I'm going to make sure your settings are set to public, because right now you're only me. Oh, that's why. Okay. Fudge. Okay, you're live now. Uh, here, I'll hand you your phone. Um, okay, starting now. Yeah, here, just write starting now, I guess. And yes, this is going to be the first oh. and somewhat, uh, what do you call it, thrown together episode. This is my daughter. This is Luna, my daughter, who I don't know if you can see her. Yes, this is yes, Luna, my daughter. And she's going to be drawing along with us today to keep me honest about making sure that I'm drawing in the way that everybody else draws. So, hi everyone. I'm going to get in my seat. This is my drawing table. If you can. <laughs> if I can. I mean, this is my drawing table. This is, as you can see, Monster Art School with Steve Ellis. And yes, we threw this together guess in the last guess couple. Starring. Yes, guest starring Luna, my daughter. And we threw this. We're throwing this together in the in the, you know basically because we know people are home and sick, and we're just trying to do something fun and nice for everyone who's out there. So um, what I have here is a six B pencil. Oh wait, I'm Steve Ellis. Sorry. I'm Steve Ellis. Uh, I'm a cartoonist and illustrator. I uh, do a lot of work for Marvel and DC Comics, uh, Wizards of the Coast, pro companies like uh, projects like Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering. And I do my own books. I will quickly. The Only Living Girl. This one actually just came out today. And the Only Living Boy, which this is a gigantic omnibus book. And I work on a project for Jason Rosen called Monsterwood. And so those are the projects that I've been doing lately. And I'm doing a project called Thornclaw Manor at the moment, uh, which is a card deck and book. Anyway, these are the pencils that I'm using. Actually, this is the best one. It's a 6B pencil. And what that means, everyone, 6B means that the lead is very, very, very soft. So that when it's when you see it, are people seeing it? Yeah. Oh, good. Ah, yay, hi. Uh, so when you when you use a 6B pencil, I don't know if you can see that up close, uh, but it says 6B right there. What that means is that the drawing you're going to be able to do, you're going to make nice dark lines. Can you see that on camera? Very yeah. easily. Here, good. Use a number so, two pencil so people know the difference. Yeah, so this is a number two pencil. Now, number two pencils are great. These are the ones that they give you for school, and I learned to draw on these. Now, frequently, number two pencils are called HB pencils. Sometimes they're 2B pencils. HB and 2B are okay. They're fine. You can get some good marks out of them, but they're going to end up a little thinner and a little lighter, and that's totally fine if you want to use those. Sometimes I use crazy colors, like I'll use red to draw, like this pencil, I'll draw with red just to get the early drawing done. You don't have to do that. I like to do that for myself so that I can do my sketching with the red and then draw more detail in with the pencil. Now, I also have here a pencil called a two, okay? Now, the two, I don't know what this is because it doesn't say 2B or 2H or 2 anything. It's okay, but it's a little harder. So what you want is a softer lead. So I would go with a number two pencil or higher, so 2B, 8HB, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, um, anything that goes above in a B in the B range. If your pencil says H on it, 
chances are it's going to be too hard unless it says HB. And what I mean by hard is you just won't be able to see the drawing and you won't be able to erase really easily. This, you can erase pretty easily. When you start drawing with the others, it's really hard to erase. When you start trying to draw with H pencils, okay? So, so paper. what? A note about paper. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing. Right here, I'm using, this is actually, believe it or not, printing paper. It's not great quality drawing paper, but it's decent. And I figure it's good for us to use stuff that is, uh, that's easy to get our hands on. So this is printing paper. It's just big printing paper. It's a little thicker than your usual print paper, but it's like inkjet paper. Um, and this paper here is a... Uh, a sheet Actual of what's it called? Drawing paper. Yeah, it's a little bit more drawing paper that Luna's going to be drawing on. Oh, it's called Borden and Riley paper for pens. You don't need to get that. In fact, I frequently will draw. Oh, I don't have a sheet there. You do right here. Oh, do I? Right. Here. Well, <laughs> I frequently draw on photocopy paper. Oh, thank you, honey. That's my beautiful wife who is assisting me today. She may not be here every time, but. Uh, hey, at least yeah, so right now. I frequently will just use Xerox paper, believe it or not. Yes. Um, try to get heavier stuff. So if you look at the paper, it'll say something about pounds on it. And if you go to Target, you can get like the super cheapo paper. It's like $4 for 500 sheets. You can use that. But if you want to get paper that's a little bit more uh, able to take a beating or be erased or anything. Yeah, Use something that's heavier than that, so it'll say, it'll have a little thing on it that says pounds. So you want to go for like 24 or 32 pound paper. Uh, the pound is just how heavy and how thick the paper is. If you go higher, that's even better. Where are you sneaking off to? Anyway, so today, come back here. All right, so today, we were talking about drawing what, a dragon was it? Yeah. Okay, so here, take your pencil. Oh, you have a pencil, okay. So. I cut my pencil really nice and fat so you guys can see it when I draw. The first things that I want to talk I'm about. Using number two, by the way. Yes, you're using number two. Uh, first thing I want to talk about when it comes to drawing is everything we draw, everything we see in the world is based on really, really, really basic shapes. Okay? So if I was to say, what's this object, right? It's a cup from Burger King. Uh, this is not an endorsement of Burger King. Um, but if you look at the cup like this, the cup looks like that, right? If I tilt it a little, the cup will look more like this. Because you can see the ellipse that this makes. If I turn it this way, all you can see of the cup now is a circle, right? So depending on where you look at an object, if I turn it that way, you'll also see an ellipse. Depending on where you're looking at an object, you'll see it from different angles or perspectives. So one of the shapes we want to be able to draw is a cylinder. Okay, now a cylinder is different from a square or a rectangle in that this is just a plain old rectangle. When you add the ellipse at the end and you curve the other end, you end up creating a cylinder. The idea is that we're creating the idea that this is a three-dimensional object. You gonna draw this? Yeah, I know. Okay, all right, all right. You're just hanging out in the background there. That's okay. No, we can see the... But so, anyway, so the, they can see your paper. So what you want to do is create the sense of depth by making a cylinder as opposed to a rectangle. And then you can go ahead with that. And we all know that this is a square, right? That's a square? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. We all know that's a square. But if we do, if we turn that square, so what we do is we want to make these lines to be parallel lines, meaning they both the same angle, they're both tilted the same direction approximately. 
and we connect them. Now we're making, they would call this a parallelogram, oh, yeah. but in this, I'm going to call it the side of a cube. Because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make one going this way, I'm going to make one going this way, okay? So we've got one parallelogram this way, another parallelogram that way, and then a third, whoops, third parallelogram like that, and suddenly we have a cube. Now I'm drawing these dotted lines in here to pretend that the cube is transparent so you can see through it. You see that? Yeah. Can you draw that? Yeah. All right, cool. Now, why is it important that we do this, right? Because it seems like, oh, how does this have to do with drawing a dragon, right? Well, if you can draw a tube like this or a cylinder like that, and if you can make a circle feel like a sphere, which we'll talk about how to do that, you're suddenly doing the building blocks of everything you want to draw. So if you want to draw, let's say, a cup, right? Well, we already did that here. <laughs> so we'll do a, we'll do that, what do you call it? Uh, ellipse. It's okay. I don't know what noise I just made. Uh, that's okay. You can make noises. And then we're going to pretend that we can only see, we draw another ellipse down here, but we're going to pretend we only see the outside ellipse, the outside. So if we're tilting it so that we're looking down at the cup, right? You can now see that this looks like a cup instead of looking like that. And now if we can do that, and let's say we take a cup Okay, we'll make that a cup. Pretend that's a cup. And then we'll make a sphere here. And I'll show you how to make more of a sphere later. Make a sphere. Then what you can start doing is going, well, all right, if I add a cone, which is shaped like this, if I add a cone here, and a cone there, and maybe some eyes and a nose, we start to get a dragon, don't we? What do you think? Is that starting to look like a dragon? Yeah. Now, this is only the beginning, and we're going to do more with this. But this is the beginning of where we start. It's really elaborate. Well, yeah. See, the thing is, though, is you start with the simple. You start with the cone. And then if you want to get more elaborate, you can add more details later on. You can add stripes. You can make them curve. But part of the trick is, if you can draw this basic stuff, it makes it a lot easier to draw the hard stuff. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, whoops, the tape up here. I'm going to flip my sheet of paper over. Now, I can't see the who, uh, people are uh, asking me questions right now. Actually, I'm going to move no, my sheet No, I'm not asking questions yet. Okay, great. Uh, but, but people are, okay. are liking and loving and joining. Oh, We've good. Got okay. Lots of people well, on right now. That's awesome. Um, that's great. So I'm going to talk about, so here we got, let's say we have our cylinder. I hope I'm spelling that right. <laughs> is that right? Or is it the other way? Is it? It's yeah, that's right. Bad. And then this is the cube. This is a cone. Both of these are two different kinds of cones. One has its tip chopped off. <laughs> and then the other shape that I really want to talk about is a sphere. Spheres are hard because it's real easy to draw that and just expect people to see it as a sphere, right? Problem is, it's really just a circle. So how do we make it look like a sphere? By adding some shading. Well, we could add, that's a good point. You could add shading. Right? What's the, what's this here? Is that the shadow underneath it? We're not going to talk about super detailed shading. Because if we get into super detailed shading, that's like a whole other level of stuff. What I'm going to talk about, and you're getting into the super detailed shading. Oh, yeah. Okay? Sorry. But I can create the illusion of this cylinder without doing shading. Right, Luna? Yeah. So if I can do that, how can I make 
the sphere feel like a sphere without doing shading. Well, one of the ways I do it is I move across the object. So if you notice, every once in a while, in order to give the impression that the object is three-dimensional, I'll do dotted lines around it. So, yeah, you got it. So dotted lines around this make it feel like it's three-dimensional. If I draw if you on the surface of the cube, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show them in a sec. You did a good job. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. But you got to wait. So if you draw across the surface and you follow the direction of the object, it gives the impression that the object's three-dimensional. So, so we have a question. I, oh, what's that? The question is, how many hours a day do you draw? Oh, gosh. Uh, oh. <laughs> I guess the, the real question is, when I'm not sleeping and when I'm not uh, eating. eating or when I'm not hanging out with these guys. Oh, yeah. Because she has an older brother that I have to hang out yeah. with. That's pretty much all I do. I draw and I write stories and I paint. And when you were a kid in school, how many hours did you spend drawing? Because you couldn't just draw all the time. Um, well, I had a lot of teachers who didn't like the fact that I liked to draw all the time. So that was always a, an, an, uh, a fun issue that I used to have. But um, now I take drawing classes as much as possible and I would get home and I would sit down on the couch and I would draw in my sketchbook and uh, I would carry my sketchbook with me to school. So during lunch, if there was no one to talk to, I'd sit and draw. Um, when the teacher wasn't looking, I would sit and draw. Sometimes I'd draw on the desk and then I'd get into real trouble because they always knew it was me. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it got me into real trouble. I drew a big piece once on a desk and uh, I had to go back in and clean all the desks. So with, I had to use spray stuff and everything, clean the desk. So I got into a lot of trouble for that one. But I used to draw all the time. In fact, my first commissioned job was when I was in eighth grade and someone wanted me to draw Michael Jackson for them. And so a girl asked me to draw Michael Jackson. And so I think she paid me like $10 to draw Michael Jackson for her, believe it or not. This was my first commission ever. Um, it was from Michael Jackson's Thriller album. <laughs> <laughs> not that any of you guys know that. But anyway, so how am I going to make... Well, they might. They might. They might. You might know Michael Jackson, the, the music. but so, uh, so how am I going to make that circle into a sphere? Well, Luna's got the right idea. What you want to do is you want to imagine, like, think to yourself, in the same way that we're doing these lines around, these marks around here, think about what it would be like to be an ant crawling along the surface of the object. So if you were an ant crawling along the surface of the object, well, if this is a sphere, you'd have to come from behind, right, and come around forward like that, right? Yeah. You can't just go across straight. You have to go around. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw, we're going to pretend like there are ants moving around the sphere. And then we can do it opposite that too. We can go, all right, let's go this way. So we want marks coming this way. You getting in the camera there? You can go like so. One. I can't see you. Oh, I'll move back. Yeah. Well, how about you draw your drawing? Yeah, now? draw your drawing, Luna. Okay. So now what happens is we create this cross section over the piece, and that makes it feel more like a sphere. Now, what I've found is that if you want to get into shading on that sphere, which we're not really going to get into much, but if you want to get into shading in that sphere, the best way to do it is to think of your shading going around the object just like the sphere. So shading would follow, I mean, just like these ants. So the shading follows the ants. So remind us, how does that connect to drawing a dragon? Well, that's where we're getting to. So are we there yet? Okay, we need to get back on track with the dragon. And so, also, we had a question about drawing cats. Drawing it's cats. The same kind of okay. thing, right? So yeah, what we're going to do is we'll draw dragons, and we might draw cats another day. So today it's going to be a dragon, but we're just going to do the dragon's head, I think. If we, don't have, we probably don't have too much time to do a whole dragon, right? Yeah. So we'll do the dragon's head, but the same kind of ideas fit with drawing a cat. So if you just work with me on dragons, you'll see how it all works together with cats. So let me put this 
down, out of the way. Here, I'll take that away. Thank and you. while I take that away, can you also talk about whether you like drawing or painting or coloring more? Ooh, um, I think drawing is my favorite. And I think that's because I love to, I like how I can put my ideas down very quickly uh, with drawing, whereas painting takes a little bit more preparation. Um, I love painting. Um, I love the feel of paint. I love the feel of the color. I love the way it goes down. I love the way it mixes. But drawing, because I can just sit down with my sketchbook anywhere I go, you know, if I have five minutes here, I can just doodle something down and have a whole idea. So I think that's my favorite because I like the speed. So anyway, here we go. Let's talk about dragons. So what I want to do is I want to make a dragon. I want to make it feel like it's three-dimensional and coming toward us. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about What's the position I want this dragon in? Well, I think we're going to have the dragon's well, the neck. Dragon's head. We're going to have the neck, and we're going to have it come like that. Okay? So think like a big reverse S. Okay? Now, draw lightly, because this right here is kind of your building blocks of your drawing. So we're going to go like this. We're going to draw an S. And then I'm going to decide the head is up here. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a spear to start the head off with. Okay? I don't have a big enough paper like you do, Dad. Well, you could draw a little smaller. Or maybe turn your paper sideways. Um, so we'll draw a spear. Can you see that over there, Mila? Perfectly. Great. So then what we're going to do is we're going to consider, well, what is this muzzle? This is his head. This is like this part of his head. Okay? What part does his muzzle look like? Because I'm not even dragons have long muzzles, right? Yeah? Okay. Like that, the, the head's kind of shaped like a horse, I think, in a way. So I'm going to draw a cone coming off this. All right? Like I'm drawing a big beak of a bird. I know it's very pointy right now. It won't always be pointy. I... We're going to draw a cone. Okay, did you draw your cone? Oh, you flattened it. Okay. Yeah, I flattened it. You can flatten it. it. If you want to flatten it, you can. So I'm going to draw a cone. A dragon. And then what I'm going to do is, just so that we keep things in the three-dimensional sense, I'm going to go back and remind myself, oh, yeah, these all have to be three-dimensional objects. So I'm keeping these dotted lines in mind. So see how just by using those dotted lines, I can make it feel like they're three-dimensional. Remember, yeah, back to those ants that you were showing. Yeah, back to those ants. These are the ants, and they're crawling around the outside of the dragon's head right now. And then for the neck, I'm going to treat the neck like a tube, and I'm going to make it really curly. So as long as that neck connects onto the head like this, we can go follow the neck <laughs> around like this. And the whole time, what I want to always think about is how everything I'm drawing is three-dimensional. So I could draw ellipses in here that are the same ellipse over and over again, and it makes it feel like it's three-dimensional. Does that make sense, Mila? That makes sense. Good, okay. Um, you know what, so, I want yep. you to say something about, um, about how you're drawing lightly because you're going to go over darker yep. Yep. when you have your final line. I, I thought I said that, but yeah, I'll, 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 I'll reiterate that. So I'm trying to draw lightly. I had to draw a little darker for you guys, but the idea is like, if you, if you see Luna's drawing here, keep your drawing really lightly and keep your lines loose. If you notice, I'm not doing just one line. The reason is I like to choose my lines. So if I do lots of lines, I can eventually choose which line is my favorite. So this line might not be the right one. That one might, okay. that one might not be the right one, but one of them will be. Yep, what's up? No, um, just making sure it's still, oh, still okay. going. Yeah, it's still okay, going. good. So now... The what I want to do next yeah, is keep drawing really. Like I have to. Oh, what's going on? Keep your lines loose. Um, I don't know. I'm not doing just here. one line. Okay, go ahead. Did it kick us off? No. I think okay, great. Going. All right, cool. So the uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this happen. idea of drawing around the sphere. Okay, so I'm drawing around the sphere, and I'm imagining this is going to be the side of the dragon's head, and this yeah. is the front of the dragon's head. You're going to have your dragon look down. Cool. Yeah. And what that is, this right here on the dragon, see, everybody has, well, 
every creature that we know of has two eyes. I was not sure like a crazy shrimp with like 16 eyes or a spider. But even if you are, they're split down the middle. If, like if you're a spider, there's four on this side and four on that side. So what we're doing here is we're creating a line that's going to go down the center of the front of the head. And we can even draw that same line going down the center of the dragon's face. Okay? And then we just have to make sure that on the other side, there's stuff that happens there too, right? So we want to make sure that on this side, the same things are happening on, as on this side. So now what I'm going to do is break this piece up. I'm going to decide, okay, where is the eyes going to go? I think, where are the eyes going to go? I think one eye should go here. So we're going to draw his skull. Ooh, scary. So one eye should go here. But since the other eye, like if this is the center of the head here, right? On the other side, the other eye, just like if I turn my head like this, you can't see my eye on this side, but you know it's there, right? So with that being the case, we know that the eye fits inside a socket. So if the eye fits inside a socket, we have to draw the socket on the other side. So this is the beginning of the socket here. I'm going to draw the other socket there and then draw up and around. So this side, there won't be an eye that we can see unless it's really bulging out, which maybe it will be. I don't know yet. Now, don't add, stop it. Just gonna look gross. well, I don't want to say bulging out, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So now the next step is going to be, let's make his mouth a little bit more solid. Let's make his muzzle a little bit more solid. So we're going to treat his muzzle like it's a nose. And right here on my nose, I have what's called the bridge of my nose. So right here, there's a piece here that we call, when we're drawing people, we call it the keystone. It's right between the side sockets. And then we have the bridge of the nose here. So we're going to treat this like it's a bridge. And we're going to get the bridge straight. Remember, we had a cone before. We're going to kind of turn the cone into something a little bit more complex than a cone. So we're going to draw down. And I'm going to treat it like it's three-dimensional still. I'm going to draw these two lines straight down. You doing that, Lena? You bring it up to, bring your lines up to here, up to his eyes, the eye sockets. Okay, just like right up My to the eye socket. looking down. I know, but still, you want to bring it right up to, just like your nose comes right up to your eye socket. It's like here, you want to do the same thing. And we're going to keep this curved, just like your nose is curved, a little bit up here, not flat. And then here, I'm going to draw another circle over here to show the nostril, this part. And I'm going to, because this circle bumps out on, the, on this side, I'm going to imagine it bumping out on that side, right? So it's got to bump out this way on that side, all right? Okay. It's okay. And then we think about his upper lip right here. So we want to bring that down. And I'm going to bring it down into a point. And the point has to meet right on that center dotted line. So the point will meet here. And then I'm going to imagine coming around and back around and back to his, to the center ball that was his head. And now we can see that what the bottom of this ball is, is his jawbone, or he's right here on his jaw. And his mouth is down here and his nostrils are here and his eye sockets are there. So where are his ears? Where, do you, where are your ears? Show me. No, on you. They're, they're like, so if you look at you, your ears are just around the orb from the eyes and the nose, right? So if we go like that, again, around the orb, we can start to make ears. And I don't think he has human ears. No. But we'll choose the ears somewhere, and we'll make the ears basically around the center of the orb over here. So we're going to go like, I'm going to make my ears kind of based on a cone and then a flap of skin like that. And so right. if I have one on this side, I have to have it on the other side, but we can't see this over here. We can just see that. What? Nice. And then put one on the other side. And you can measure the two by going like this. If you follow the brow and you follow the nose and you follow the ears, they're all going to be parallel lines. Okay. So that way I know that the tips of the ears are going to be the same height. 
That way I know where the ears start here are the same. And well, we can't see that, can we? So we can't see the inside of the nostril. We draw across here and we're inside the eye over here. So that's why we can't see those parts. So here I'm going to draw the other ear. And really these are just triangles. See, they're just triangles, right? Kind of curved triangles. And then we need horns, right? Dragons have horns? Yeah. Okay. So let's get... I mean, not all of them do. Well, I think in this case we're going to have horns. So I'm going to start right here where his hairline would be. So right about here, above his eyes, I'm going to start doing a cone. I'm going to curve it a little bit. And another cone. Now, this cone is going to interfere with that ear. That's okay. At this point, just draw over the ear. We'll fix that later. Okay? So now we've got our horns. I don't have my horns yet. Oh, yeah. We'll get those horns in there. Oh, you got doubles? No, I see those. Yeah, so you've got your horns. Remember, make them cones. Okay? Now, on yours, because the orb is up this way, it may get covered over that way. So depending on where they fit on the skull, you might see the bottom of them like this, or you might see them back here like that. My dragon is looking down because yeah. I drew it a little awkwardly. So. Okay. So now I'm going to start throwing in some extra stuff. So I like my dragon to have, I'm going to make his mouth. So I'm going to put his mouth in. And it has to go around here. And I'm going to put it all the way back up to here. I'm going to make my dragon smile a little so bit. So people who are doing their things with me. Mm -hmm. uh, how would they put in their mouth? In their mouth? Well, what I'm going to do is imagine the mouth cuts this muzzle area through here straight. And then I want this muzzle area here to kind of be a little more rounded. So I'm going to come under it and then down to that point. Does that make sense? So, so I'm coming from the point around, treating this as if this is kind of a ball. This is a really good question and then coming straight back to where the, the original ball meets the cone. Yeah, you're getting it. I mean, I would bring it in here a little bit closer. And then you can do stuff like this. You can start going, I'm going to add a, a cone here, and a cone here, and maybe another cone over here, where his teeth are poking out. He's got an underbite. I don't know. Oh. And you can give him a chin if you want down here. He has fangs, because you know there are some dragons who do have metal. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So now for the nostrils, my next step is I'm going to look at these circles and I'm going to say, let's see what happens if I treat the circles like they're little caves. So I'm going to cut them like so, and then I'm going to draw inside them. So see, it's basically a, a half circle drawn inside a half circle. All right. And what's going to happen is what I'm going to do with that is later on, actually I'll do it now, I can shade that. And then I start to have what looks like a fun, creepy little nostril where smoke can come out of. And then up here with the eyes, I'm going to draw. Now my eyes, the way I like to draw eyes, I like to think of them as they're under, they're, you've got a ball, okay, which is the sphere of the eye. And then you've got the eyelid over the ball and then the under eyelid under the ball. So you see the inside of that eyelid like that. So I'm going to draw my, 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 uh, the orb of the eye, and then I'm going to draw the upper lid, and the upper lid goes over the lower lid. So I'm going to draw the upper lid, and then the lower lid underneath it. And then I kind of want him to have a, a nice big eyebrow. So I'll give him or her. or her an eyebrow like that. And again, everything I do on one side, I want to do on the other. So if I have a big eyebrow here, I want to have another big eyebrow on that side. Okay, so now, now the step is let's get this, let's attach it to the neck. And let's start to think about how we're going to decorate this to a degree. How much time are we? Do we have? We're at two thirty-four, so we've got about ten more minutes. Okay, cool. We're going to make this a forty-five-minute class. Yeah. So, is everyone good with that so far? Are we? Do we have any questions? I can take a quick question or two. 
No, keep going. No, okay, then I'm going to keep going. All right. Well, you just asked for questions. It's going to take him a minute to type. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. So while I'm, while I'm switching gears here, so I want to start thinking about how an object like a horn, right, it's set into the head down here. I look at spikes. You can do that. But then as it moves away from me, it's going to start to look like it switches direction. So if I'm going to put, what I like to put is, I like to make the horns kind of look like ram horns. So if I'm going to do that, I want to have them here looking like they're coming down. Those ridges on the horns. I don't like to do that with mace. You don't have to. And then basically I'm start with, we're looking down at those lines. So we're seeing them like this. And then eventually they flatten out. And then we start going the other direction. And so I'll do the same on this side. Whoops, yeah. So aside from dragons, what other kinds of animals do you draw as uh, oh, Penelope? Let's see. Horses, tigers, lions, cats. Uh, Wolves. Wolves, yeah, I love our wolves. Um, and we can definitely do some of those, right? Mm -hmm. I just started with dragons because it was the uh, first thing that we thought of. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can do wolves. We can do we can do any other animal. Lizards, alligators are fun. Serpent folk. Serpent folk, yes, like lizard people. <laughs> Hydra. <laughs> Hydra, which is a multi-headed dragon. All sorts of mythological creatures. All kinds of mythological creatures. Um, I like those especially. So... Oh, do you have another question? Yep. And okay. uh, someone wanted to know that uh, when you're drawing a comic panel, how long does it take you to draw uh, like a basic comic panel? A panel or a, a, a page? Panel. Ooh, really depends on how complex the panel is. I mean, if we're talking about one that's got a character in it, then it's probably, you know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. If it's a figure and the buildings and cars and... Yeah. A whole street scene? That might take me half a day to do. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a comic book there right next to you. Maybe open oh, yeah. Up and so, yeah. Show, like, point to a panel and say, like, this kind of panel, just to do the pencil drawing, would take me how long? Okay. I can do that. So, uh, here, here's a good example. <laughs> this one took me about a day to draw. You can see it's very, very detailed cityscape. And there's lots of, you know, there's a dragon. There's all oh, kinds of stuff yeah. going on. But then... A panel like that one, or that one, may only take a couple hours, maybe less. Because there's only two people, and there's a lot less going on, a lot less detail. So the more the detail, the more complex it gets, the more I have to deal with perspective and things like that, the longer they take. Um, I just drew a page that took me several days to do because it was people riding motorcycles and driving cars and flying through the air and it was kind of crazy so it took a long time and there was a lot of city scenes in that one too yeah there was even city scenes in that yeah so it took me that a lot longer than i expected sound. so now the next step i'm going to do is i'm going to move on to a darker material so what i like to do is switch halfway through to uh where's my sharpies i had them here Luna. oh can you grab me a sharpie sweetheart okay yes. let's make sure this is a good sharpie so I wouldn't necessarily you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Sharpies because ah, these no. are not good. I wouldn't necessarily recommend Sharpies because they're not always they're not always um they, they kind of oh, here. They kind of smell funny and they can make you you know get a little loopy if you don't have enough air. So but, make sure you open a window. Yeah, open a window or be in a big room. But what I do like about Sharpies is they're very, they're very fast. You can make some black marks really quickly, and you can make decisions really quickly, but they can't, you can't erase them. So the reason I do the pencil is I know I can erase that. So once I do the Sharpie drawing or the ink drawing or whatever, I can always erase the pencil drawing, and then I have a happy drawing. So here, let's get our dragon. Wait, hold on. Whoops, sorry. So talking about the kinds of things they might have at home, they probably have yep. a black marker or a, a, black, a black pen? A black colored pencil or a black pen. Um, 
you, you, you know love, you love your um uh, the the ink gel pens yeah gel pens are fun uh they're a little skinny i like bigger ones that i can draw real thick lines with but uh okay. yeah if you if you have like you know i have fancy markers like these copics and but frequently i'll find myself using uh regular pens like this or what? like this or like the, these are my these are some fancy ones here. Oh, this yeah. is just a regular ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are a lot of fun. Uh, you can get some really fun uh, colors and, and tones out of them. Are you going to switch to inking your drawing too? Yeah. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do with this, with this process is I want to basically decide. Remember, I said I was going to draw all these extra lines, right? So what I want to do is I want to decide which lines are the ones I want to keep. So I'm going to have my sharpie in this hand waiting. And we use my pencil drawing, my pencil, to just kind of figure out, okay, what's left? Well, what am I going to keep? So I have this just in case. I have the pencil just here. So I'm going to start with the eye. Remember, I want that eyelid to feel like it goes over the eyeball. So I'm going to draw the eyelid. And then I'm going to draw that eyebrow. And because... This eyelid is creating a shadow in there. I mean, this eyebrow is creating a shadow in there. I'm going to do some shading. And then I can come around like so. And then I'm going to make him, these are, these I'm kinds of eyebrow them. lines here. Yeah, make them. Make well, I think mine might be a boy and yours can be a girl. Or, yours can or be vice them. versa. Mine can be a them and yours can be a doesn't really matter. <laughs> so, so to remind somebody who just has a question, um, sure. so this is you putting some sort of ink, like a yep. really dark um, ink, whether it's a pen or mm -hmm. a Sharpie, over your soft pencil. So that would right. be uh, any pencil that's like a, a number two pencil. Yep, number two pencil or, or softer. Or any of the pencils that say B on them. Yep. So yep. you were working with a 6B. I was working with a 6B, and now I'm using a, a black marker. And basically, something you need to know, there's like a magic trick here. Every single artist that I've ever met, when they draw, their first line is never the right line. It's usually like 20 or 30 lines in that they figure out the right line. So you do all your scribble lines, like I just did here, and then you have, this is called your finishing material, your, pen, your, your marker. So now I can just choose, right? I'm going to say, oh, I want this line, not all the rest of those lines. I want this line instead of the rest of them. I'm going to choose to draw here. So I'm picking and choosing what I'm saving. You know what? A really yeah. good place to see that is in the neck because it's really obvious on the video that the neck has lots of lines. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, let's, let's, get, let's get this in, and then we'll talk about that. That's a good idea. It's a good point. But I might even pull the camera in really close okay. to this part. That's a good idea. So you can see all these different lines that I did, all these scribbly lines, and then I'm just going to choose the ones that I like most. And in some cases, I'm not even going to complete all the lines. I'm going to let some of these lines disappear. Like, I don't need to complete the top of his nostril because this gives me the idea of the nostril without drawing the whole thing. And I'm going to draw around his mouth, and then I'm going to let another fang come out. I have to remember, I'm going to curve that line because I want it to look like it's a three-dimensional tooth. So I'll make it more like a teardrop than a triangle. So it's going to come like so. Mine's going to smile because I like to have a smiley dragon. Mine's just going to be like... Mm. And give him his chin. And then we're going to go down to his jaw. And I always bring the jaw up into the ear so you can draw this part of the ear right here oh, I don't that uh, part of the ear right there oh wait well they, they're, they're not going okay to that. show it on luna okay this part of the ear right forward. here more so forward, if you follow more forward, more forward. More forward. i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> you follow this line up like this you follow it like this right up to that part of the ear so i draw that in and then i loop the bottom of the ear underneath and around and we come like so and then let's get the top of his head I'm gonna wait for the top of his head because I have another idea there so you can see with the uh, horns I'm gonna 
because I want those ridges, I'm going to draw each one individually. So they all have their own you bump out a little bit and I can get each one whoops I kind of went off well I'll just try and guess at this point sometimes you're drawing you just have to guess and that's okay yeah and you are at 245 oh no okay but you've now done most huh. of the face People can do their own horns later. Yep. And you can do the neck. I will do the neck in just a second. Whoops. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about was decorating your dragon. So I'll get the neck in. And we'll to talk about that later. Well, no, I think we can talk about a little bit. So decorating your dragon, I mean, like, I think of scales as kind of like triangles. So... If you do a triangle, another triangle, and another triangle, and then you put another one okay. here, okay. and here, and here, another triangle here, and here, and you just keep going, you can make a whole section. So what I'll do here is I'm going to separate it out because, I don't know, dragon bellies seem to have different scales than the tops of dragons, kind of like alligators do. So I'm going to go triangle. Yep. Triangle. Now what I like is I don't necessarily have to finish all of these scales because the idea is just to give people the impression that there's all these scales here rather than drawing every single one because you'd be here forever if you drew every <laughs> single one. Yeah. Plus your drawing would get too busy and it'd be hard to see it. So if I just give people the impression By putting a few in kind of in, in certain mean, places. Yes. And it looks like you're treating this, the scales like you would treat the ants that you get across the top of the yes. sphere. Yes, yeah, definitely you want to treat them like the ants. They need to go around. So if you're going to draw ones over here, you're going to probably see them at so an angle away from you. They probably want to put them in a pencil before they ink. Probably, yeah. You probably do want to try this out in pencil first. But because we don't have much time, I'm going to do it in ink. And then... I'm going to give him or her, again, treating it like we're going ants around, right? Ants from behind, around to the front, ants from behind, ants from behind, and then it's going to loop around, just like what we did with the, with the cone before. It's going to loop this way so that we can see underneath, and then it's going to curve the other way so that it goes away from us. And then we can have a dragon. And then you can do things like little shading things. And always make sure your shading follows the shape. So if you have an orb, always make sure your shading hungry. goes around it. I'm hungry. I didn't have lunch at all. Yeah, yeah, okay. If you have a cone, always make sure your shading is going around it rather than just straight. So I'm going to shade up and around to just kind of give the idea that the ear is three-dimensional. I can put a triangle in here, curved triangle for his eye, and then I'm pretty much done with my dragon. Okay, let's take a look at Luna's dragon, too. Yeah, here. Let's bring dra Luna's dragon up. It's dirt. I, I, I think it looks really good. Excellent. It's, it's so it's I think dirt. I would suggest for folks can post up their own dragons. That'd be great. I'd love to see what you guys did. And, and if you yeah. guys want to color your dragons... That's right. Yeah. Color them. That'd be great to see. Uh, if you want to use markers or crayons or whatever you have at hand, it doesn't matter because art should just be fun. Okay? So uh, I will... What? The frame. The frame? Oh, we talking about, about putting a frame around it. Oh, right! Yes! Last finishing touch. If you want to make your art a, pe a masterpiece, what you do is you don't, you don't draw a whole one. You do is you draw a frame. So here we're gonna go. We're gonna draw a square around the piece, and but, we want it to be. But let the uh, let the dragon fit outside that square. Because that would look more three D. Right, and then we basically go. Doo -doo -doo. Thank you for remembering that. You don't want those scales in there if you can avoid them. But 
Now you can sign it, Steve. But you should probably sign it with your own name. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see you here tomorrow. We're going to be doing another monster, creature, or something. I'm going to say, how about if everyone votes, tells me what they want in the thread here, and I'll see which one gets the most votes, and we'll do that tomorrow. Okay? Also, I have a note. You have a note. What's your note? I'd say we want to do more monsters than regular things. So Yeah. Okay. Well, we can do regular things too. Because I want to do more. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Every monster is usually just a weird real creature. So if you look at like a you know, a dragon's just a crazy lizard kind of a creature. And a a werewolf is a wolf and a person. And a serpent folk. Serpent folk is half person, half serpent. Name something that's like what about kobold. Uh, dragon people. Um, uh, dragonborn. You're naming all the dragon people. Can you name something that's not a dragon person? There are other things other than dragon people. Like there's cat people. I forget what they're called. But there's throughout mythology, oh, Bastets are cat people. So if you go out throughout mythology, you'll find all kinds of creatures that are based on the actual animals that you see. So if we draw a cat, unicorn. we can draw a cat creature. Yes, a unicorn is a horse yeah. with a horn. So if you guys want me to draw a horse, I can draw a horse and a unicorn all in one. So I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Have fun drawing. Keep drawing all the time. Get out your pencils. Draw. It doesn't matter what you're drawing on. Whatever paper. Don't draw on the walls, though, because mom will get mad at me. Uh, anyway, bye-bye. Oh, I'm going to put my sign up. Look, see?